In the previous video we installed and configured Tailwind CSS. In this video we're going to be creating our first component which is going to be the navigation. Now the navigation for this app is quite simple. On the left hand side we'll have the branding and then on the right hand side we'll have a few different icons that'll do various things. And for the icons we're going to be using the Font Awesome library. Now on a mobile viewport the navigation is going to be quite simple so currently what you're seeing here is a flex row and then once it gets down to a small enough viewport here it's going to collapse into a flex column. As I mentioned, we are going to be using Font Awesome for the icons within our application. Now the quickest way to do this is to head over to cdnjs.com and then you want to search up Font Awesome. And then we're going to copy this first link tag here. Now we are going to be using the free version of Font Awesome so you don't have to worry about having an account or a premium subscription to follow along with this tutorial. Then inside of the index.html file, very similar to how we imported the Google font, we're going to paste in that link tag that we just copied from cdnjs.com, and now we have the ability to use Font Awesome inside of our application. Okay, so let's create the navigation component. So where we're going to do this is within the components folder, so we'll select this and we'll do a new file, and we'll call this site navigation. Inside of our component, let's first create a view boilerplate. So to do this, we're going to type in V and then we'll say base and the option we want is going to be V base dash three and then we're going to say setup. Since we're also using Tailwind, we don't need the style tag here. So I'm going to remove it for this component as well. Now, since we want the navigation to be present on all pages, we're going to need to import this into the app.view file. So let's head over to the app.view file and let's also close this panel here so we can have a little bit more room. And then we want to import this component into this file. So where we're going to do this is right above the router view tag. So let's define our component here. So we'll say site navigation. And as you can see here, since we're using Volar, it's going to automatically import this for us here inside of our script. Also here in app.view, we're going to apply some classes to our entire application. So on the div that's wrapping our site navigation and router view, we're going to apply class. We'll start off by setting the display to flex, then we'll set the flex direction to a column. Then we're going to set the minimum height on here to 100 VH using a class of min H screen. Then we're going to set our font to font dash Roboto, which is the custom font that we imported inside of our table configuration. And then lastly, we're going to set a background color here to our custom color of weather primary. Now back here inside of the site navigation component, let's begin to generate the markup needed for the navigation itself. So to begin, we're going to remove this div tag here and replace it with a header tag. Then inside of here, we're going to create a nav tag and we're going to apply a few classes. First, we're going to have the class of container, then we're going to set the display to flex, then we'll also set the flex direction to a column initially, then using a breakpoint, which we can target by saying SM and then colon here, we're going to change the direction to a row once it gets to a small breakpoint and above. Then we're going to align all the items to the center using the item center class. We'll apply some space between these flex items by using the class of gap and then four, which will set a gap of 16 pixels. Then we'll change the text color to white here with text white. And then finally, we'll do some padding on the top and bottom by using a class PY. And then we'll use a value of six, which is 24 pixels. Now on the header tag itself, we're going to apply a few classes as well. So let's define our class here. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the position to sticky. And then we're going to set the top to zero. And then we want to set the background color to our custom color of weather primary. And then we're also going to add a shadow here of large. Inside of the navigation, we're going to have two flex children, one for the branding and then one for all the icons that we're going to have within the navigation. So first off, we'll create a div here for the branding and we'll apply a few classes. So we'll say flex, we'll do items center, we'll specify a gap with a value of three, which is going to be 12 pixels, and then we'll specify flex one. For the branding, we are going to be using a icon from Font Awesome, which is going to be a sun icon. So here on Font Awesome, I already have this pulled up, so we're going to copy this here. And then inside of this div we just created, we're going to paste this in here. Now, the only class we're going to apply here to make this icon a little bit larger is a text class, and we're going to say 2XL, which will change the font size to 24 pixels. Below the icon, we're going to create a paragraph tag here, and inside of here, it's going to say the local weather. Then we'll apply class here to this as well, which will have the class of text to XL. And as you can see, we have our branding here now. 
Now when a user clicks on any part of the brand name, you want to navigate them back to the home screen. And to do this, we're going to use what is called a router link. So the first thing we need to do is select our entire diff here for the branding itself. Then we'll do the keybind command shift and P, and then we're going to use something called Emmet wrap with an abbreviation. And inside of here, we're going to type in router link. Then what we want to do, since we use that, it actually isn't going to import it automatically for us. So once we save this, we'll need to import it here inside of our script. Now when using the router link, you need to specify where you want the user to go through a to prop. And as you can see here, we didn't specify that and now our application is currently in an error state. So let's define that. And how we're going to actually send a user to a specific route is through the name of that route. So we're gonna use colon two here to bind a value to this to prop. And then we're gonna use curly brackets here and then we're gonna use the name of the route. So we're gonna say name and then we wanna send them to the home route here. So if we head over to the side panel here and go to our router, we're going to send them based on the actual name of that route, not the path. Lastly, for the navigation, we're going to have the icons. So below the router link tag here, we're going to do a few line breaks and create a div, and then we'll apply some classes here. So we'll say flex, and then also a class of gap three, which is going to be 12 pixels between each one of our flex children. Then inside of the div here, we're going to grab the icons from Font Awesome. Now, the first one we're going to have is going to be the circle info. So we'll copy this code snippet, and then we'll paste it in here. We're also going to be adding a few additional classes here to our icon. So first off, we're going to adjust the font size here by saying text XL. And then we also want to have a hover effect on this icon. So how we do a hover effect using Tailwind is something called a modifier. So we can say hover here and then specify the actual class that we want to apply when we hover over the icon. So for this, we're going to change the color. So we'll say text and then we'll do weather secondary here. And for a smooth transition, we'll add a class of duration and we'll specify 150, which is 150 milliseconds. And then we'll also do a cursor of pointer. And as you can see, when we hover over the icon here, we're going to have this nice hover effect. Now, currently the icon is sitting right next to the branding within our navigation. We actually want the icons on the right hand side here. So what we're going to do is within our branding here, we have this class of flex when we're actually going to remove it from this div. I made a mistake and forgot about this when we wrapped our entire branding inside of this router link. And there is a few ways we can go about fixing this. But the way I'm going to take is we're going to apply a class of flex one here to our icons and then we're also going to pass a class of justify end and that'll push our icons to the right hand side of the navigation and for the last icon we're going to be using this plus here so we'll copy the snippet here and then we'll paste it below our info and we're going to be using the same exact classes here for this icon as well so we'll copy these and then we'll paste these to this and then if we come over here to our application now you can see we have both the icons here